and today we're going to do some fun landscaping projects. Uh, we're going to do some raised garden beds made out of logs. Uh, and it just happened to be a material that I had laying around. Uh, there's lots of ways to build these boxes. You can use treated 6x6 posts. Uh, you can do all kinds of things. Uh, but this again will just happen to be something I always have laid around which is logs and it's somewhat easy to get in this part of the Rockies. Uh, so if you have access to some trees that need to be cut down or some trees that have been decked for a while or just sitting around, uh, this is a cheap way to do it. <clears throat> so there's not a whole lot of materials with this and I'll go through it with you uh, from the beginning until how it's going to end. Uh, and then hopefully you saw a couple of my other projects that I did um, for landscaping. I gave you guys a video on how to set up an actual greenhouse. Uh, I also did another video for you on asparagus gardens, uh, starting an asparagus garden, but mine's not looking too good right now because it's the dead of summer. <laughs> and I also did one on setting up a grow station uh, or a grow bench uh, to start your seeds and your, your young, younger plants uh, and do a lot of your potting. Uh, so a couple of projects that I've already done here. And then I also have another project that I'll have a video for you guys here uh, pretty soon, maybe by the end of winter, by the time I get these boxes done, uh, where I'm going to also be starting a year-round greenhouse uh, in a fully climate-controlled uh, shed, which is another project that I'm working on right now. And my goal with this uh, year-round winter greenhouse is to be able to have that completely off-grid uh, at some point, too. So that's something I haven't done yet and I'd really like to finish up. So um, I'll have lots of landscaping videos for you and gardening. Uh, but my goal here with this project, as, long, as well as my other projects I have here just in this area, uh, is to have year-round growing. Now in this part of the Rockies, I only get about 150 days of actual outdoor growing time if I'm lucky. Uh, and with the way the climate's changing these days, it's super unpredictable. Uh, so I'm kind of trying to challenge Mother Nature here into finding a way to, gr to grow uh, anything I want to grow all year round. Uh, this, this clear greenhouse uh, that I have is great from like spring to fall, uh, but it does, there are days here like right now in August where it is super hot and I'd have to have a shade cloth uh, or something on that to even finish my growing uh, from spring to fall in a clear greenhouse. Uh, the goal on these boxes is that I can set these up uh, from spring to fall as well, but grow larger uh, uh, vegetables or whatever else I choose to put uh, in, the, in this dirt, but obviously will have to be shut down by winter because, it, again, it's not going to grow year-round uh, where we are, and then, uh, then move into a, like I said, a fully uh, heated and uh, air-conditioned shed to grow anything else that I choose to grow year-round. Uh, so hopefully that accomplishes you know, 12 months out of the year of growing if I had to do something like that. Uh, and then, of course, I'd also have to make sure that something outdoors like this is uh, kept away from deer and dogs and everything else that wants to eat your outside plants. Uh, so I will have this uh, fully fenced off where nothing's going to be able to get in here except for some super small critters. Um, so lots of things to consider here uh, with all your gardening projects. Uh, this, these raised boxes, this one for example turned out to be about a 10 by a 10, almost a 12 uh, foot by about one and a half foot high uh, box. Okay, so that's going to put you at about five to six yards-ish uh, of dirt. And I'm guessing you probably don't have topsoil sitting around because out in the Rockies we have nothing but clay. Uh, so I did have to bring in some topsoil, which I have to do for everything here unfortunately because there is a reason they call this the Rocky Mountains uh, but this topsoil uh, came from like an old hay field which was full of nutrients uh, it's really easy to get because they're turning so many of these beautiful hay fields out here uh, into subdivisions so we have quite a bit of topsoil available these days uh, and then to fill in this box 
I'm probably going to be need about another five or six yards. So you're looking at like a uh, small dump truck or a dump trailer full of dirt, you know, that can carry eight to ten yards of, of uh, topsoil. Um, yeah, and you, you might have to bring that in unless you have something like that at home. Uh, so you'll also see I have a lot of pea gravel in here. I talk about this pea gravel a lot uh, with my gardening because I have piles and piles of this uh, that I use for tons of stuff. Um, now, unfortunately, there's some grass and some weeds growing through this that I'll have to pull out uh, before I throw some dirt in here. Uh, but the pea gravel <clears throat> that I wanted to put these logs on is really just for drainage and to keep these logs from rotting uh, any faster than they're going to rot. Uh, now, if you're trying to be an organic farmer or gardener, um, you'd probably have to use something like a linseed oil or some other kind of heavy-duty uh, organic oil to coat these logs. Um, I've used that on lots of projects before, uh, but it absolutely does not last as long as anything like a waterproof stain. And this just happened to be, the stain that I used just happened to be colored because it's something I had left over from my porch. Uh, but this, these logs on this side, as you can see, have a heavy duty waterproofing stain and yes they had a color as well uh, and that is ideal for these logs and I really would not recommend doing these logs without putting some kind of waterproofing on it because they will rot <clears throat> especially with all the water that you're going to be using to water your your garden um, so as you can see these logs here uh, are not coated with anything yet you know and then this is what it's going to look like when you do start staining them uh, whether you use oil or, or some kind of waterproofing stain. Uh, the pea gravel underneath it, you know, is just to keep those logs on the gravel instead of the dirt. Uh, and then you'll also see uh, all these stakes. So besides the fact that you're going to map this out, you know, with your dimensions exactly how you want this, and I would suggest getting a tape measure and getting your stakes or your rebar, <clears throat> whatever you decide to use, um, I do actually have a rebar cutter, which a lot of people do not have, but it's super handy because I use rebar and stakes uh, in just all kinds of my gardening projects. So if you ever do decide you want to invest in a rebar cutter, which is a great idea, um, that just makes things go way easier, and they're not really as hard to use as they sound. Uh, if you decide to go buy rebar, you know, something similar like, similar like this instead of stakes, uh, because it is cheaper than using an actual steak, uh, you can buy these steaks, you know, like, you know, Home Depot or, or hardware stores. You can buy steaks like this, uh, and they come in different lengths, like uh, two feet lengths and three foot lengths, uh, but they are expensive. So, you know, a lot of these are used for concrete work and stuff, uh, but these steaks, these full metal steaks are nice to have, uh, but the rebar is a lot cheaper. So, and you can get this rebar thicker, but you really don't have to because all you're doing is trying to keep these logs from moving. Uh, and then once you get your dirt set in these logs, it's really not going to move too much anyway. Uh, but if you don't have a rebar cutter, a lot of these uh, home improvement stores will cut the rebar for you if you know what heights you want or what lengths you want this rebar in. Uh, because I only went two levels high on these logs, um, these stakes of rebar that I cut were about two and a half feet high and that seemed to be the perfect dimension. So if you buy a 10 foot stick, which is what it's called, in uh, this size rebar or any size rebar you want, but I wouldn't get it any bigger than this if you're going to cut it yourself. Uh, but if you buy like a 10 foot stick, you're, you're going to get four two and a half foot uh, pieces of rebar out of that. So and that worked out perfect because that's about how tall you're going to need this rebar to go two logs high. Um, now, another thing you might want to consider, which I'm not doing, uh, was leveling your ground area first. Um, now, I don't usually level any pad unless there's a building on it um, or something that you actually have to stand in. Um, because if I had leveled this pad out <clears throat> so that these boxes were perfectly level, then my fence would have would not have looked level. <laughs> So you have to kind of decide what you want leveled and what you don't. So I don't tend to level the ground and anything that I don't have to level other than a building or something you actually have to walk in. Because once you level one thing, then you have to level everything. So I just chose to go with the ground, the grade of the ground on this, which is fine. 
Uh, but if you decide to go higher than two logs high, um, which you can, you know, that probably puts you up to about a little over two feet high of dirt, uh, then you obviously your, your stakes are going to have to be longer. Uh, you can actually make corners for these boxes if you decide to make corners. So after you've built your your logs uh, and you've alternated, as you can see, I kind of alternated these corners a little bit too. Um, so, you know, this one's long, this one's short, this one's long, the next one on that side will be the short side. So alternate these a little bit, kind of like, you know, playing with Lincoln Logs. Uh, you can make some corners if you want to do like some 1x12s or some 2x12s and build some corners on here if you don't feel like they're secure enough. Uh, but mine seem to come out pretty pretty secure. And then I am going to actually go back and get some long, uh, like, three or four inch fencing screws. And just kind of, or you can use some, uh, you know, four inch fencing nails, whatever you want to use, just to kind of keep these all uh, a little bit more solid. Uh, before you stain your logs, after you get them all set, uh, is go back and peel them. Uh, there's a couple different tools I'll show you a picture of here on my video here in a second that you, you can use for peeling logs. There's some great ones. I've used them on all kinds of log projects. Um, and like this log, for example, you can see it was in a fire. So a lot of that, especially on lodge pole, uh, came off super easy. I didn't even have to peel it. Uh, but you do if you have any kind of bark on it, and hopefully your logs don't have too many because peeling logs can take a really long time. Get, I have this septic fabric that I also kind of keep on hand uh, that I use qu for quite a bit of projects. It's kind of like a weed fabric, but it's actually used for people that uh, do septics, septic tanks. Uh, it's a liner that they use in the drain fields. Uh, and it can be used as a weed fabric, but not much will grow through this. Uh, but what I think I will do on this box, because I noticed after I did this box without lining the corners, I'm definitely losing a little bit of dirt out of the corners, but I think what I'm, what I'm going to do on this box is, well, I'll show you down here. I think I'm going to line the corners a little bit with some septic fabric uh, before I put the dirt in. And all that's going to do is keep some of that dirt from coming out of the corners. You don't have logs that are very straight, uh, and you wind up getting some really big gaps through here. Um, you know, these, these logs right here are lodgepole. They're generally as straight as you can get. Lodgepole is a great, great one to build with. Uh, they do dry out a little faster because they're a little bit more light weight. Uh, but you can, if you have to, uh, line the insides of these logs with Visqueen before you fill it with dirt. Or you can use something like a, a great stuff, big gap filler, you know, that kind of thing. If you do have some really big gaps. Uh, but fortunately, I did not have very big gaps on this because of the, the straight logs that I have and when I tested it with this dirt and I just ran the hose on this as hard as I could and as long as I could I still really did not have dirt coming out of uh, the the edges for some reason I don't know it just seemed like it all just kind of stuck real good um, you can see right here though where I was talking about where the dirt did start kind of coming out of the corners a little bit so again I would recommend maybe putting a little weed fabric or septic fabric in your corners, which I'm going to do on the other one. Obviously, I can't go back and do this one. Uh, but if you choose to do the Visqueen, it's really not... A gr I don't really like using Visqueen because uh, it also catches the moisture and the mold. So if you don't have to use the Visqueen, don't do it. Uh, and you can use a weed fabric if you really have a weed problem before you put your dirt in. Uh, but most dirt has weeds in it anyway, so unless you're buying weed-free dirt, which is super expensive, you're going to get weeds anyway. So I am not lining this with anything. I'm just going to stain it, maybe put some of that fabric in the corners, put in my dirt. Okay, so let's go back to these stakes because this is kind of important. Um, anyways, you're going to have stakes on both sides at this end, and you're going to have stakes on both sides at the other end of the log. And then for every section you do, it's the same thing. You want to, you know, just at least get these stakes in, or I'm sorry, put your first log down, get these stakes in, and then set your next log on top of that. So you're going to put this first log down wherever you want it on the gravel. Then you're going to get stakes at least every other corner here. Uh, and then you'll, you'll set your next log on top of that. Kind of like building with Lincoln Logs, but you got to have something to keep all these the second group of logs in place. So stakes on both sides, every single section.
I'm going to be doing another log project. Uh, since I still have some logs left, I'm going to build a horseshoe uh, pit, you know, plus like an alley for the horseshoe pit uh, that I'm going to put together. I'm also going to make that out of logs. So that'll be another fun log project. Um, I'll let you know when I get to that. And in the meantime, uh, if you have any questions, come and see me on my website, Susie Homesteader of the Rockies, and I will see you there. I don't think those were Lincoln logs. Bye-bye. So, let's get started. Subscribe to the Susie Homesteader channel, and we'll see you there. Bye-bye.